Welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. In this problem, we want to figure out the linear speed of a bug moving around in a circle. But before we uh, do the problem in all my tutorials, I'd like to go over the uh, symbols and units and the equation needed and some conceptual things about uh, linear uh, speed. There's some conceptual things about objects moving in a circle. One is there's a force required for this object to stay in a circle, and they call this a centripetal force. It means center seeking. An example of centripetal force would be a car making a turn. Uh, as a car makes a turn, the force of friction acting upon the turn wheels of the car provides the centripetal force required for circular motion. What does a diagram look? Uh, of an object moving in a circle, we have here's here's a diagram right here. We know the velocity moves tangent to the circle. Here's our radius. We got a, one thing we need to know is we need to know that the uh, radius is half our, our diameter. Uh, FC here stands for your centripetal force, and AC stands for your centripetal acceleration. Notice they both go towards the center of the circle, and your linear speed is tangent. How do objects accelerate in a circle? Again, acceleration is a vector, and both the force and the acceleration act towards the center. All right, so here's some equations uh, that we need to know about moving around a circle. Here's our first one. What is linear speed? We know that uh, speed is distance divided by time. So where does the 2 pi r come from? We, the distance around a circle is your circumference. And the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So here's a derivation of that. So 2 pi r divided by t gives you your linear speed. It's also called the tangential speed. Uh, two important equations here are also your what is your centripetal force and what is your centripetal acceleration. Your centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. And you can see using Newton's second law, we can derive an equation for centripetal force here. So since we're solving a problem with linear speed, let's make sure we focus on knowing the units for these. We know Vt is meters per second, and we know the radius needs to be in meters. Again, we need to know that the diameter is twice the radius, and time in physics is second. So let's go ahead and solve our problem now. I always like to have some kind of method to solve all these problems, and uh, here, here's one. I like to read through the problem in a circle and label all the important information. So I look for units and then keywords and what's being asked. And I go back and uh, label each thing. So it's impossible to do that unless you know what the units are and the symbols that match with the equation. We know kilograms is mass. And we know meter stands for distance. In this case, it says the diameter. So we put that diameter. We use that for diameter. And then here's our time. And then we're looking for our linear speed or tangential speed. So the next thing I like to do is create a little, well, here's my little scratch pad, a, a T-bar here with my knowns and my unknowns. And then it's easy to go back and organize them right here. So here's my mass, time, the diameter. Half of that gives me the radius. And that's what I'll use in the equation. And I'm looking for the speed. I put the units here because I know what my final answer should be in. So here's the equation, 2 pi r divided by t. If you Make sure you uh, use parentheses in your calculator. C calculate the top part first, or you could get it an operation error and end up with the wrong answer. So we got 2 times pi times the radius. That's a big key in making sure you get the right answer. And then if divide by the time, which is 2 seconds, we end up with 1.57 meters per second. So this tutorial um, is part of, a, of my book called My First Physics Book of Motion. It's a 153-page book that's designed for a student new to physics um, from high school to collegiate level. Uh, it makes sure that you uh, learn the fundamentals and terminology units has problem solving uh, and problem solving skills. So you show two different methods there uh, for solving problems. Uh, the study guide takes a hands-on approach has many interactive tables, worksheets, and mini quizzes. And then, of course, uh, you see how this is referenced uh, to the book. It's available at starstudyguide.com or 
straight at, at Amazon.com. I guess t type in these keywords will help you find it. But if you go to StarStudy.com, so the two ways there, you can link to Amazon. Uh, if you think you want to see more about the book, 